Hello, I'm Ted Dangelmeyer, and this demonstration is on measuring walking voltages of people. And there are a variety of ways of doing it. We're going to talk primarily about using a field meter, such as this one, that is equipped with a charge plate, a monitor. This top plate is isolated from the lower plates, as you may have noticed in the other videos. And my I'm going to be holding this rod, which will connect to that top plate and allow the instrument or the field meter to monitor my walking voltages. And again, this is connected to the data acquisition system that we'll display shortly. If you look to my right, you'll see uh, an image of the walking pattern that is specified by the association standard 97.2. or STM 97.2. Basically, it's a, like a box step where you, you go around in a, a pattern. That's not too, too critical, but the idea is to do something that's repeatable so that you can get measurements. And part of the concept is to make some movements and then stop. And when you stop and rest for a few moments, you'll be able to measure the standing voltage and then walk again so you can uh, again, measure the walking voltage and the standing voltage, which are both important uh, in manufacturing operations to know when somebody walks across the floor and they stop momentarily, wh what is their, their standing voltage at that point and how quickly does it get to a level that's acceptable for your application. Here you can see uh, you have it connected to a computer and uh, walking on the floor. Behind me and below me, we have two samples that we'll show you shortly to demonstrate this, this walking process. And what I'm going to do now is to bring up the display of the body voltage. And this, again, this is what's this equipment is measuring my body voltage and displaying it up here. So let's um, start the measurement process. Okay, it's now operating. And what I'm going to do now is back up onto one of the samples. And this is a, a carpet, just a piece of, of carpet. And by the way, the shoes I have on are street shoes. They're not conductive ESD shoes. So you would get different results. Plus, neither of these samples are really grounded properly. This is more just to show you how to make the measurements. And you'll see that materials behave differently. I have two different types of materials and you'll see that we get different results. Okay, so here we see that I'm not really at zero because of what I just said, it's not grounded uh, properly and the carpet isn't really an ESD carpet. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna make these simple movements like you saw in the sketch. And so just a repeated pattern, like so. And now I'm gonna stop. And in this case, it's gone back to zero. And now we have our measuring volt, our walking, standing voltage, excuse me. We do the same thing again. Like so. I'm gonna stand again. And now you see, you see from the display that we have measurements for the walking. We have peaks that are approaching 800 volts. And the uh, zero is uh, somewhere close to zero, probably because of the floor, subflooring being mildly conductive. Now we're going to do the same thing on this other floor. I'm going to form the same pattern. I'm going to go in a very similar pattern at least. I'm going to pause. Now notice we're getting the average reading is significantly lower, and that's a reflection of the material properties that we'll talk about. I'm going to do it again. You can see I'm not a very good dancer. In fact, that's the only time my wife and I ever argue is when we dance. So there we go. Okay, now you see the reading is, is uh, lower again, and we're getting the, the, both the standing and walking voltages. So let me come back here and talk a little bit about this. We have tested two different samples. We got, we got walking voltages here 
Um, and the second sample was much lower than the first. And you'll find that different floors have different properties depending on the shoes that you're using. Very important to measure this total system because we've seen actual cases where the shoes pass the resistance tests, the floors pass the resistance tests, but together they failed the walking voltage test. And according to S2020, it needs to be less than 100 volts for a 100 volt program. In other cases, you may need it to be much lower, and it can be with the right choice of floors and materials. For instance, rubber flooring tends to be low charging, whereas vinyl floors tend to be high charging. Now, this measurement can also be made with a contact voltmeter uh, like the one we used in one of the other demonstrations. By setting it up properly, holding the tip, and walking in the same pattern, you would be able to measure the walking voltages. Uh, and again, it's just an alternate way of doing it. That's something that's good to know about. So this walking test is going to become increasingly important because the uh, requirements within S2020 will be changing with the next issue and it's likely, not certain, but it's likely that walking voltages will play a more prominent role in the requirements for qualifying materials. But regardless, when you do qualify your floors, test them not only with ESD footwear, the ones that you'll end up using with the floors that you'll end up using, but also with street shoes to see which floors are lower charging than the others. The reason for that is to reduce the probability of human error, people walking in the air in the workspace without ESD footwear. Some floors, like ESD carpet, um, ESD rubber flooring, floor finishes, you know, ESD wax, they all tend to be lower charging than other materials. No guarantees, but it, in, on average, their volt, walking voltages are much lower. So uh, thank you, and that concludes this demonstration.